My name is Bill DeYoung, and you're here to see the Catalyst Session. So am I. Um, I'm, so, I'm so glad to, uh, to be here with you on this wonderful Tuesday in August, five months in. Yes, we're still uh, attempting and doing a pretty good job, I think, of keeping our arts community virtually connected. Coming up later this week, on Thursday, as a matter of fact, it's going to be show number 100. We started in late March, and on Thursday, our guest is going to be Ephraim Sykes who uh, is a St. Petersburg native who was nominated for a Tony Award last year for his role as David Ruffin in Ain't Too Proud, The Temptations musical on Broadway. And uh, Ephraim is a, uh, is a graduate of Gibbs High Pinellas County uh, Arts Academy. Unbelievable uh, program over there and a wonderful guy. And he's gonna be with us on Thursday to help us celebrate 100. And today, Another special guest. What a great week this is turning out to be. Please say hello to Janae Preeby, who is the coordinator. Did I get that right? Coordinator of the Shine Mural Festival, which is coming up in November, number six. Hey, Janae, how are you? Hi, Bill. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I have your, your, your new logo in my background there. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. We spare no expense here at the Catalyst Sessions to make everything look technologically savvy. Well, let's let's get let's get uh, right down to it. Um, this is the sixth year for Sean. Have you been involved every year? When did you come in? I have not. I was a volunteer um, starting the second year, and then again on the third year. And after that third year, a lot of the original um, organizers stepped back. Yeah. But they um, ended up creating a position at that point because everybody was just on a volunteer basis up to that point. Mm -hmm. So after that, they created a position. And um, because I had worked so closely with a lot of people on the team through, through volunteering, I was able to, to step into that position there after the third year. Shine has been, I don't want to say, I, I guess I should say, uh, yeah, a runaway success. I, when you think about, you know, six years ago, yeah, there were a couple of murals. It was neat, kind of disorganized now. This is, I, I think, and John, I think, is fond of saying, too, John Collins, that uh, it has, in one serious artistic creative way, put St. Petersburg on the map. This is now what we're known for. How many murals are out there now as we go into year six? Do you know? Oh, my gosh. I think there's close to 600. <laughs> uh, yeah, St. Pete's definitely on the map. You know, I, I would really agree with that. I, I think one of the things that's been so powerful about the murals here in St. Pete is that, like, you know, we all know, everyone here, I think, knows that we have a thriving art scene. We have so many incredible uh, museums, but the murals, like, you just can't miss them. It just, it says everything for you. It really lets you know, as soon as you step foot in the city, this is a city that cares about art. You know, I grew up in St. Petersburg quite a few years ago, and uh, often I will talk on this program with folks who've been here for a while, as I have, about how there was nothing here for years and years and years. And I think if there was ever anything kind of neat looking painted on a wall, it might have been the Seahawk tile guys over on uh, 49th Street in Central or, you know, Elsie uh, the Cow on a Borden building. You know, I, I, it's, it's suddenly this is a place where art is everywhere, which does sound like a, probably somebody has that trademark somewhere. But art is everywhere here. It has been, I, I don't know, we call it a renaissance because there was nothing here before. Um, how important is Shine, in your words, to the city's artistic reputation, you know, nationally, regionally, globally? It's like, yeah, there's a lot of great arts that happen in town, but that mural festival, you know? Yeah, I think it's huge. I, I really do. I think that so, you know, like I was saying, I wasn't involved in the very beginning of Shine. I experienced Shine as a fan, like everybody else did in the very beginning. And for me, it was just like transformative. I couldn't believe that something like this was here in my city that looked the way it looked, that was bringing in the artists that it was bringing in. I mean, for me, that was really an incredible experience. And I think that was part of the original intent, right, was to really you know, there are a lot of hardworking artists here, but people don't necessarily think about St. Pete, or at least, you know, six years ago, they didn't think about St. Pete as a place that you'd come for, you know, big time collectors or things like that. Like if you really want to make and sell art, you go to New York City or you go to LA or you're going to go to Miami or something like that. 
And part of the original intent of Shine was to really change that perception. Say, hey, there are big name, credible artists that are coming here to St. Pete to leave their art. And it's transforming the city. And we're pairing those artists with our local artists that are so talented. It really has transformed, I think, the way that people see St. Pete and, and you know, and, and again, it's just so visible. It's so visible, you can't miss it. You know, you have to kind of take a look. It's like, wow, this is, there's some incredible art here. It is an advertisement for itself, I think. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy to notice I figured out what was wrong with my lighting here. And I'm now not in the shadow anymore. I told you it was very casual doing the shows. <laughs> uh, by the same token, I don't know how much you can speak to this, but how important is Shine to the city's sort of economic success? I mean, John and I have talked a lot about the economic impact of arts, various Arts Alliance programs and money that the arts brings into the city. Now we're not talking about a normal year here, of course, but does Shine, does Shine bring a lot of money into the city? I guess that's the question. We're, we're just beginning to kind of have that, that data. Like in the past, we've just it's hard to track because it's so public. We don't really know and we don't have a way of tracking like who's coming to see these murals and where are they coming from and, and where are they staying when they get here. But last year actually, for the first time we partnered up with um, Visit St. Pete Clearwater. And as part of their sponsorship for Shine last year, they had um, an analysis done basically to really try to measure the economic impact of Shine. And, and what they came up with was like over $2 million worth of economic impact just from Shine, just from that one week, um, you know, which is significant for the city, I think, especially considering, you know, the investment that goes into Shine, you know, what comes out of it is, is significant. And, um, you know, and, and we also, what's been fun is that we've partnered with Pixel Sticks. And as that, you know, sort of technology grows and, and um, more and more people are learning about it. What we're gathering is a lot of really cool data from that, like we can track now how much foot traffic is going to these murals based on how many people are tapping these plaques. So we do have a little bit of data now we're starting to see and we think for us like that's a big you know, selling point for local businesses to have a mural on there. I'm like, we can show you. There were like 200 people that were just here at your wall. At your I never business. thought of that. That, pixels, that. That's amazing. I never thought of that's a way to track visitors. I just yeah. thought it was cool. Right. It's kind of interesting on the back end. We're, we're able to see that, you know, we don't know who people are. We don't know where they're coming from, any of that yeah. kind of data. But we can see that people are tapping those plaques and, and we know that they're there at the property doing it. So, you know, for local businesses, it's a great way to like put a sign out like, hey, if you're coming to see the mural, come on inside. You know, I think it has the ability to really be an economic driver in ways beyond probably what we even thought about. And it just gets, it, it, except for this year, it gets bigger every year, but it just gets better every year. We're going to talk about this year in a minute. Um, I, want, I want to stick on this pix, uh, pix, I want to keep wanting to say pixie sticks, but this <laughs> pixel sticks. Thing. This is the drive-in theater experience that, that we keep hearing so much about. Can you explain that to me exactly how that works? Because, I mean, clearly people aren't driving up in their cars and going, look, Martha, what's this? I mean, uh, how, how does it work and what does it do? Because I haven't done it yet. But I want to yeah. know. Yeah. So this is a concept that that Matthew Walker with Pixel Sticks came up with, and it's really just a, a new creative way to repackage a virtual tour. You know, it's it's he kind of identified a lot of these murals or really a lot of parking lots that you can go to and see more than one mural at a time, more than one shine mural at a time. And so you go there, and then you because of Pixel Sticks, so you can you can tap the thing on the building, or you can also access it from your phone. So there's two different ways to view it. You can do it at home, you know, or if you're sitting in your car, you can you can access that information without even getting out of your car. So is, you said plaque. Is there something literally on the wall, on yep. the mural, saying touch here and ask me about myself? I mean, is it like, like that? Yeah, every Shine Mural now has a little black plaque that says, you know, Shine Mural Festival, and it has the artist's name, and I think the year it was created. And that plaque within it has the technology to tap it with your phone with the Pixel 6 app. And, and you get, it takes you to a website that you can, you know, if there's videos that we have of the artist creating the mural, you can see the videos. Some of them have artists made their own videos of them talking about the mural. Yeah. Um, that's like the Nomad Clan one is one of those. Yeah. Where they have like a whole story and it's a recorded audio of them. You can hear them talking about it. Hey, let's, uh, you know what, let's find that one if I can find it here. Because, um, all right, Bill, one, oh yeah. Let's talk about Nomad Clan because this, this was uh, 2019 and this kind of 
brings to mind something that I did want to talk about if I can make this stupid thing work. And of course I can't. I'll figure it out in a minute. Okay, let's look at, you know, let's just look at a couple of murals and then I'm sure it will come up for me eventually. Um, what I like about Shine is that it runs the gamut of styles, it runs, uh, you know, the styles and visually, it's, some of them are very subtle, some of them are abstract, some of them make no sense at all, some of them are just cool. What am I looking at here? I mean, can you identify everything if I, 600 murals, what is this? Yeah, so this is Matt Kress's mural um, from 2018. Mm -hmm. um, this mural was actually, it, this is Matt's very first mural he's ever done. Um, he had applied actually to be the open call artist that year yeah. and was not selected. But then this opportunity came up. This was a, a partnership with the Bucks. Uh, they wanted to have a mural in St. Pete to kind of help promote the Bucks, but they wanted it to be, you know, artistic and, and really let an artist like kind of have their own take on the Bucks brand, basically. And I don't um, see a logo anywhere. I mean, how cool yeah. is that? <laughs> There's no logos. And, yeah. you know, yeah, we don't allow any logos and really like we don't do anything that's considered advertising or, or branding for any specific business. And, and really that's because we get money from the city and we're not, you know, we're not trying to promote any specific business. It's yeah. really, truly a celebration of art for art's sake and like what that alone can do to transform a city. Nomad Clan is from, I want to say Wales? Uh, Manchester. Oh, well, they're, they're from the UK then. They're from, they're from England and it was, was two ladies? Yep. I think mm -hmm. Th this is this is Narvaez going down, I guess, off the coast of Alabama, uh, I th I, if I remember correctly. I remember watching them do this and thinking, that's a stunning piece of work. I mean, it would be a cool looking canvas, but it's on the side of a wall. I don't know how many, you know, how many feet long this is, but it's real big. Yeah, what their mural is it's just stunning. It's incredible. They did such a good job and they did it <laughs> quick and they did it in the middle of a hurricane. I mean, they just they, yeah. they really crushed it. And they had a great time. They were just fun to be around. It was awesome having them here. Unbelievable. This was 2019, right? This was just last year. Uh, well, Nomad Clan was here in 2018. And this, oh, this came with the Matt No, Kressler. I don't even know what year it is anymore. Okay. <laughs> Time doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> now, this is Becky Bukes, whose work I think is brilliant. I think she's great. Uh, and That's I've seen funny. this. This is Becky's, isn't it? Oh, it's not changing. I still see Matt Cress's. Do you? Uh, okay, well, let me figure out something. I see you. I got a Becky Bukes thing, and it looks like that. Do you see it now? No, I don't see it. It's high tech, oh, folks. Uh, one, more, one more time. There we go. Got okay. It. This is on, uh, I want to say, uh, First Avenue North somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, this is uh, First North. This is the side of uh, sort of where Green Bench meets uh, Mercado. Yeah, yeah. Her stuff is, yeah, I can always spot her stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, you Yeah, know, she did a great job. This is also, I think this is the largest mural she's ever done. Um, well, actually, that may not be true. She did the Rialto Theater in Tampa, so maybe that's not true. But she did a great job. Um, yeah, this was also 2018. Okay, well, Becky's from Tampa. No medical you're talking about from England. Um, so th this year, notwithstanding, which we're getting to it, I guess the question is, how do you decide who's going to be invited? How, how do you make those choices? There's a lot that goes into it. We, we have a curation team and it's, it's complicated. There's a lot that goes into it. I mean, I, I think for us, prioritizing diversity of styles is always top. Uh -huh. You know, really making sure we're bringing in, um, you know, different art than what we've had here before. And then certainly different art than what, than and anyone else on the lineup that year, making yeah. sure that part of it is really diverse. Um, making sure we're, you know, representing a lot of different communities and backgrounds. And, um, you know, there's, there's people I think that we all just would love to have here. You know, there's a little bit of just like personal preference in it when we're trying to figure out like, gosh, who, who do we want to bring here? Um, 
you know, there's just so many great artists that, to choose from. Honestly, it's difficult. It, it's really hard to, to stop at, you know, 20 or 10 or wherever we're at sure. every year. It, it's just, there's well, you're so limited, many. You're limited A by the number of walls you have, the number of time, time you have, and I would say most importantly, the number of money you have in a given year. And you can't have every muralist in the world, you know, then you yeah. wouldn't have any kind of regular, you know, white, black, green, yellow sides of buildings. Um, what's yeah. this? I, this is very abstract. I like this a lot. Yeah, this is Ricky Watts. This was from the very first year. Wow. Um, okay. This was a massive wall. Yeah, Ricky came out and just crushed it. So yeah, this was before I was involved, but I remember watching this come together and was just like blown away, you know, I think like a lot of people. And I still, this is probably one of the most photographed murals that, that we've done. I mean, we're always seeing stuff online with people using this as a background and um, it's just fun, you know? I think there's there's a element to it that's just so St. Pete, you know what I mean? With like the bright colors and just sort of the abstract, it just feels happy and I, I think people are just drawn to it. Well, again, this is an example of something that is, is in a way formless, that sort of an abstract, uh, but it's, it's, very, it's very interesting and it really does draw your eye. It's not like a thing or people or mm -hmm. something wacky uh, like, I can't remember the names of those guys, and I don't have it here, who paint on the side of Coney Island. Good morning, Brad. Uh, those guys are, uh, I watched them do that one this year, and it makes no sense at all, which, you know, <laughs> they'll tell you that to them it does, but yeah. then, then they sort of laugh, and it's like, it's just, but but I like this, even though I, you can't sort of say, oh, it, it is this or it is that, and it's got this wonderful three-dimensional look to it, and uh, I wish yeah. I was an artist. I mean, that's all I can say. So folks, if you're driving around St. Petersburg, you may well have noticed, if you don't know any about this stuff, that there are murals everywhere downtown. And uh, there, there are gonna be more coming up. And uh, I don't mean to tease you, but we're gonna be talking about that in a minute. I'm gonna find another one because I have a couple of pictures here. Oh, I like this a lot. And I, and I cannot remember this artist's name. And I think this was from 2018 as well. So you can help me. This is on 22nd uh, Avenue South, I believe. Yeah, this is Das. Das, oh yeah. I stood, yeah. I stood and talked to him and he was very patient with me. Yeah. <laughs> Which He's was nice. Super nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Das is awesome. And it's been cool. Like he's, I mean, he's done a lot of really big murals before coming to St. Pete, but he's gone on to do some really, really great murals you know after leaving here and internationally too right i mean he's he's an internationally known guy yeah he's he's yeah. really based out of japan although he's originally from florida i think he's originally from jacksonville area but he's yeah. based out of japan now yeah it's got a very sort of asian feel to it the, the, the sort of shadowy i don't know what you call that sort of patchwork i remember looking at a lot of his other stuff before i went and met him and uh when it, when I, when I saw him, it, it, you can you can look at a picture of this, you can see it online, you can uh, I don't know see it in a book, see it in Adel's book, which is lovely. But until you see it in person, you don't really un even understand how cool these things are. It's so true. It it really is. I feel that way about so many of the murals. Like you just don't get the full scope and the full scale of them unless you're standing in front of them and it, it's it's yeah. powerful you know i think that's one of the things that i love the most about it is like for me when i look at these things like it really breaks down these barriers like like you can have walls everywhere and they're they're used to separate spaces that's what walls do but when you put art on them it just transforms the whole space i mean it's like you're a part of your city you can belong there you can interact in a, in a way that you could never do on a, on a plain wall. You know, I just think that's incredible. I think for me, like being in a position to be able to create those, those moments of, of belonging, those moments of sort of like community engagement, like that's what it's all about. Well, I'm grateful that you're here. I have one more to look, look at, and this is shock one uh, who does very, very unique work. Is he English? Yeah, he's from London. Okay. This extra stuff, and I think this is another one from 2018. I guess I, I for some reason, this, was, to... uh, this is not last year actually. Okay, well, see, then I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I remember I, this was one. This was one of the artists that I was driving around and couldn't find him, and I was in the neighborhood. And sometimes I have a problem with that because I'm not very good with directions. 
Yeah. Well, I can imagine how cool it would be to be walking down the street and turn a corner and come upon something like this. I still yeah. don't, I still, Janae, don't know where this is. Maybe you can tell me. <laughs> so this is, Shock One is, first of all, it was amazing to have him here. It was honestly a pretty big deal to get him here. Like, he's really, like, OG, like, graffiti guy, like, he doesn't really do mural festivals. So I don't even know how we got him here, but we got him here. And so, you know, this is really what he does. This is this, this uh, x-ray style. This is a dog skull. And that's actually, uh, you know, he's like making a shadow puppet. And this is actually his wife's hands. And, uh, you know, sort of making the, the shadow puppet of this dog skull. And he's just, his technique is like unmatched. And he really does everything so precise like he really works off actual x-rays that he gets from from doctors or veterinarians and make sure that this is really really precise because he said he'll just get grilled on like he'll post a picture online and he'll have like the whole medical community up in arms telling him like everything he got wrong in there so he's really learned <laughs> how to master the exact you know lines of these x-rays and really make it you know anatomically accurate so it's pretty incredible <laughs> and he did this like all at night like he, you know, coming from the UK, I think the heat was just brutal for him. And of course, it's always raining here and you never know what kind of weather you're going to get in the fall. But he, he did this pretty much all at night with a headlamp. It's just incredible. One last, uh, something I, I, I wrote down, I do want to ask you, I talked to you about how you choose the artist, but how do you, we talked about this earlier this year where you did a call for walls. How do you decide where things are going and how do you, you know, uh, are people lining up saying, come put something on my wall? How does that yeah, work? We do. We get a lot of requests for, for murals on people's walls. Um, we're looking for a few main things, though. Like, it's we can't use everybody's wall, unfortunately, but we're looking for high visibility, obviously. Um, we're looking for a location that's close to other walls that we're doing that year. It doesn't necessarily have to be close to walls we've done in the past. Like, you know, it's nice to kind of move around town a little bit if we can but having them close together so that at the end you can kind of go on a nice tour and see mm. all of them or most of them in, you know, in a couple of hours. Um, and then really just the accessibility part of it. Like if there's too many windows, there's too many doors or wires or poles or you know, all this stuff that's in the way, you don't really have a clean canvas. And Shine is different than you know, just commissioning an artist to do a mural. When you're commissioning an artist, you can pay them appropriately to overcome any kind of obstacles that they may have on their wall. With Shine, because we're, you know, run based off sponsorships and we're fundraising all year long to try to make this happen, the artists all get paid, but not the same that they would if it was a commissioned piece. So because of that, we really try to give them like a completely clean slate as much as possible. And then we give them that full creative control. So like, mm -hmm. that's sort of the trade off to not getting paid what you would get paid normally, but have at it, have fun. We're going to make it as easy for you as possible. So I don't have to know, give you a sketch or something ahead of this is what I plan to do, Janae. Uh, no. 25 naked people in it and you know or something you know what I mean they, yeah. don't have, you don't have to, they don't have to clear it with you yeah they don't I mean we do have them sign a contract but they're not allowed to like there's no nudity there's nothing mm -hmm. like you know overtly offensive things like that but yeah. like you know and that's part of the curation process too it's like really being careful about who we're selecting and making sure you know we feel like they're highly professional and experienced and they can handle this kind of um, you know, this kind of a job. And the other thing is they're doing this start to finish in like eight days most of the time. And like, that's an incredibly fast timeline for some of the walls that we pick that are just like massive. Like when you think about Pixel Poncho's wall, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like over 200 feet long and, and he had like, I don't know, 10 people helping him or something, try to get that thing done in a week. I mean, it's insane. Like that shouldn't have happened, but that's part of the was, fun. <laughs> was it last year, uh, you and I, you introduced me to someone who arrived a few days late. And, and she was uh, racing to get it done by the deadline. I don't think she quite made it. I think she stayed an extra day. She ended up staying an extra day, yeah. But she got that whole thing done still in like four days. It, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And but yeah, we did end up at the last minute switching her to a smaller wall for that reason. Well, so it's good for the artist because it goes on their CV, it goes on their, their, their resume and their portfolio, if you will. And, and, and it is forever for all intents and purposes. And it goes on the, sh the Shine's virtual briefcase as well, you know? So it's yeah. sort of like, we, said, we have this, I did this. But but one more question about the walls though. Are, are they literally lining up saying, I wanna be part of this? I, I have, you know, Joe's 
shoe repair downtown. I got a great wall for you, kid. Come look at it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we get wall submissions all throughout the year. You know, people are always reaching out, you know, and, and it is, we do make the property owners contribute as well and make a donation to the Arts Alliance to help cover the cost of doing the mural. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we have people all year long. Everybody, everybody wants to be in on it. You know, I think they see the value in it and it's fun. And, and honestly, you gotta paint the building anyways. There's not a waiting list like, hey, if I give you my thousand bucks, I'll be on the list next year. No, because I'm like like the wall, yeah? Yeah, a lot of the walls just aren't usable. You know, it's, it's yeah. hard. Like there's, there's, we would have, we would do 10 times as many murals a year if we could because of the amount of walls that people offer us, but we just, we can't use a lot of them, unfortunately. Well, then we get back to the money issue and the artist's time and all that right. stuff. Let's talk about this year, which is November 7th through 14th, if I remember correctly. I see it on my backdrop that it's actually November 7th through 14th. <laughs> this is gonna be a little smaller. Um, one, because of COVID, and two, because of COVID. Um, <laughs> Well, and three, because of uh, Governor DeSantis taking a big chunk of money away from you. Uh, for um, 10 artists this year, as opposed to 25 or 30, is that correct? Yep, looking at doing 10 artists this year, usually we do around 20, so about half the size that we're used to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you said it, COVID is brutal. I, I have so much respect for anybody trying to get anything done this year. It's just mm -hmm. rough. You know, everything takes three times as long. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's difficult. And I think a lot of this year, like property owners, there's a lot of things in flux, you know, it's a difficult time. And so trying to get anybody to make a commitment about anything is, is difficult. And, um, you know, there's plenty of artists that, that, would be more than willing to do the work. I think we just, we don't have the money to do it this year. So, which well, I'll put a little shameless plug out there. We are still looking for sponsorships. Okay, that's, that's good. That's, why we're, that's another reason we're here. Um, the thing is that uh, it is at its core, it's, it's an outdoor activity that doesn't involve a lot of people jammed together. In other words, painting murals is kind of safe, COVID wise, that's yeah. the advantage. Absolutely. We feel like we can do it safely, you know, by eliminating the events or almost all of the events, you know, we feel like we can do it safely. You have one artist at a wall, mm -hmm. they get their job done, you know, and then people can just need to be careful when they go out. If they do want to see the process unfolding in real life, just, you know, wear a mask, keep your distance from people, stay in your car, whatever, you know, you feel comfortable doing. But um, yeah, we're fortunate in that way. We do feel like it's one of the few things that we, we can still safely do. This is called uh, seawalls. And it's, you're doing this in association with the Penn GC Foundation. Explain, explain to me, if you will, what that is. I know what it is, but explain it anyway, what that means. Yeah, so Penn's GSC Foundation is a nonprofit that's based in Hawaii. Um, they advocate for ocean conservation, basically in its simplest form. Um, but one of the primary ways that they do that is through their public art program called Seawalls. So they travel all over the world to different coastal cities and, and produce full scale festivals, just, you know, basically just like Shine, but they do it all over the world. And then every festival focuses on that regions or that city's most pressing ocean issues. Um, so we've been doing that here. We've been working with different local marine scientists here with NOAA and Ocean Conservancy yeah. and, you know, Florida Fish and Wild, Wildlife, tons of different people, USF and, and, getting an idea of like, what are the biggest issues here facing St. Pete? And so then we're, we're putting together a topic deck with that information. The artist will receive that information and then every artist will, will portray a different topic in their mural. So they get to kind of pick which topic they want to do. And then, um, and then they also get, you know, further educated on those issues so that based on the seawalls model, the artists really become activists. They really go out there and, and try to advocate for changes that could be made to really protect our waterways and, and our environment. So that's kind yeah. of the, you know, the premise of it. When, when these are uh, done, I mean, when the, when the plaques go up, you know, will the, uh, the pixel sticks thing discuss the issue as well? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That'll all be a part of, I mean, yeah, what goes online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. It is uh, November 7th through 14th. And what's, tell us what the website is. Shine Mural uh, Festival. Yeah, so we're on the Arts Alliance, the St. Pete Arts Alliance .org yeah. slash Shine Mural Festival. There we go. 
Well, what did I want to ask you? That just slipped my mind. Give me a second. Um, 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 you haven't, I know what it is. You haven't announced the artists yet, but I think what you said publicly is that they're, they're all either local or they're Florida. It's very, very Florida. In other words, nobody's coming from the green fields of Scotland or anything like that this year. It's, it's yep. very Florida. And that is a condition we should be honest about not having as much money as you normally do. Um, and, oh, I also want, want, you told me once, too, that, that it's usually in October, but they moved the Grand Prix from March because of COVID. Oops, and that's why you're in November. I wanted to get that in there. It's, yeah, the Grand Prix. COVID, huh? so, so, yeah. so in other words, these are, these are uh, you're going to announce the artists and the locations when? Um, as soon as we have it all together. <laughs> once we have something to, to share that's solidified, um, you know, a lot of the walls right now are still in flux. Thanks COVID. It's just, it's just been slow, but we have a good, a good lineup of artists. Um, and we have, it's just a matter of kind of matching them up with, with the walls and really getting that part solidified. So once we have all that together, everyone will know about it. But usually, you know, usually we don't start announcing that stuff until about six weeks before the festival begins. So oh, okay. we've, got, we've got time. Yeah. It's a pleasure to talk to you about it now though. One last question. Do you think St. Petersburg is ever going to run out of walls? Oh, you're all painted out. <laughs> uh, we're getting there, honestly. I mean, there's a lot of places we can move. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of desire for us to move west. And we kind of explored that this year. So if anyone that lives out west is listening and you have a business and you want a mural, we're here. We're ready. You just oh, the, let us know. the westward expansion again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. We're, we're conquering new lands. But, you know, yeah, there's West. I mean, there's the whole Skyway Marina District that's, you know, potentially an option. And there, there's lots of places to move. But I do think in terms of the downtown arts district corridor, like we've, we've used some walls here. We're, we're running out. Oh, don't say run it out. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of little corner spots you haven't used. I should ask, you You know, I, I, we're, we're kind of done, but you make me think, do they last forever? I mean, in, in 20 years, will some of these have just dis faded and disappeared? What's, some that, of them what's will. the shelf life of this kind of paint? It really depends. Honestly, the biggest factor, I think, is the sun. You know, if you have a wall that just gets direct sun all day long, it's, it's not going to last real long. Like, we saw that with um, the 123 Clan mural that Vitaly Brothers painted over last year. Uh -huh. That was done the first year, 2015, and it was, it was not in good shape. And that had only been, what, four years, and it, it was looking rough. So that's why we covered up that one. But it got full sun all day long, you know. And, and also depends on what type of paint you use. Some of the spray paint brands are a little bit better than others will last a little bit longer than others um you know the bucket paint tends to last pretty well it's not going to be as vibrant but it's got a, a good shelf life but you know i don't know we'll see i mean i, I think I, I think there's you know i think a lot of them will last a long time our contract only requires that they stay up one year so beyond that whatever happens happens that's kind of the beauty of you know art in the streets so see uh future generations you know 500 600 000 years when they're when the archaeologists archaeological dig is unearthing oh the ruins of old St. Petersburg they'll know because there'll be walls with 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 interesting graphics and people and it's skeletons. <laughs> it is it's like a time capsule you know yeah. I, mean, I feel like these yeah. will eventually get painted over or you know some of them have have gotten you know buildings built right up next to them you can still see yes. a sliver of what used to be you know it's it's, it's kind of so fun like tell treasure. your grandchildren I remember kids one day there was a great work of art here. Yeah. <laughs> Janae Preeby, absolute pleasure to speak with you. You and, too. And uh, uh, we'll check in with you when it gets close to when you uh, when you announce who's coming and what they're doing, and we'll uh, we will reconvene at that time. Sounds good. Thank Thanks you for joining. Me. See you soon. Bye bye.